Upping, wheezing, stiffness, difficulty of breathing or chest tightness or a combination of any of these symptoms. So, acute exacerbations are actually episodic attacks of acute inflammation on top of the chronic inflammation that I earlier described. Okay? So, acute attacks may be just temporary worsening of the symptoms, or maybe they are really fine. Talagang ganon ang asthma, papalik-balik. Or maybe it is a failure of ongoing long-term therapy. If it's a pain maintenance naman ang bata to, pero minsan very poor ang compliance. Hindi na tutupad, hindi na susunod, dahil nag-improve na na palimutan yung pain later. Okay? So, we have acute exacerbation. I will limit my, my lecture on acute exacerbation. I want you to relax. I want you to pick up whatever you can and apply it maybe to any one of your patients. Okay? So, hindi ibig sabihin kung ang kategory ng pasyente is severe persistent, dapat kada atake niya, severe din ang attack niya. No. Even those who are classified as mild intermittent can later deteriorate and become mild persistent, moderate, or even severe persistent. And in any time, an exacerbation may occur. Okay? And the exacerbation may be mild, moderate, or even life-threatening at times. Okay? This is what we don't want to happen anymore. Okay? So, that is why I limited my, my lecture with roundtable discussion on acute exacerbation because look at the patients that arrive at the ER. This was a prospective study done in France. Okay? One fourth of the patients had mild to moderate exacerbation. Another one fourth had fatal asthma. A large proportion of the patients had severe exacerbation. These are patients brought to the emergency room. Okay. So now let us get to one case study. This is a seven-year-old female who was brought to the emergency room with difficulty of breathing. Okay. The history started seven days prior to the admission. The patient had stopped and cold, was given only maybe as a congestion or maybe a mentality. Or maybe a group of dilator, okay? Mm -hmm. Two days later, the cold resolved, but the dry cough persisted usually in the early morning. This patient was given guaiotenicin with no relief. Then the patient started having occasional chest tightness, increased frequency in the coughing, relieved now by some vitamin medication. Two hours prior to the admission, Chest tightness was felt with more difficulty in breathing. That's why the patient was brought to the emergency room. Based on the history, what is our clinical impression? Okay, so we all agree this is bronchial asthma. What do we need to support our diagnosis? Do we need a family history? Yes? Okay. What about the past medical history? Do we need some information? Yes. yes. Environmental history? Yes. yes. Physical examination? Yes. yes. Of course. So now, let's go back. Family history? The father is asthmatic. The mother has allergic rhinitis. And then normal pneumonia has some form of eczema. I think these are all stigma. Stigmas are all a possible bronchial asthma inheritance, right? Okay. Immunization history, complete now. Okay. Past medical history, oh, the patient was diagnosed to be asthmatic, still okay. two years of age, was being given salvitamol rehabilitation for chest tightness, and salvitamol was via penicillin syrup for cough. 
hospitalized for us at the age of four years, was maintained on inhaled cortical steroids but with poor compliance. Environmental history, the father smokes, there's exposure to salt, they have pets in the house, there's carpets in the bedroom. So, do we all agree these are very good trigger factors? Yes. Okay. On physical examination, the patient is the kidney, tachycardia, 37.2 fever in it. Wala, fever. So, ano ang temperature na parang nagsabi ng may fever? 37.6? What is it? 37.5 38 Okay, actually, the majority is different It's said that the WHO is 37.5 and above It's said that Dr. Genesis Rivera is 37.8 and above So, anyway, 37.2 is not So, the height 145 centimeters, the weight 20 kilos. Oh, ginawan siya ng peak expiratory flow of 255 meters per minute. Okay? Prefers to be in the seating position, can answer questions in sentences, has other flaring, intercostal and subcostal instructions, weaving was audible with the semi-code, and O2 saturation was 92% at room air. Okay, to get the peak expiratory flow rate, we are given this formula. Okay, let us just remember two numbers for girls plus 170, for boys plus 175. So, we get the height in centimeters minus 100 times 5 plus 170. Okay. So we get, we expect this patient to have a peak flow rate of 395. Kaya lang, the peak flow siya sa clinic, 255 meters lang ang kanyang best peak flow reading. Okay? So you get the percentage 255 out of the 395 more or less, it's only 64.6%. Okay? What is the normal peak flow rate? At least 80% and above. Okay? So, if it was about a peak flow rate, the may ng iyang bibuga, if it was about barado ang iyang patinghawa. No? Okay? The may ng 64 na, 65. Okay? So what is the asthma severity of this patient? Mild, moderate, severe, or impending respiratory failure. Actually, we are given a table. We can publish that and do copies and stick it in our table in the clinic or in the drawer. Because for me, ako kahit ako mismo hindi ko siya ma-memorize. Okay? So sabi ng ating history, the patient prefers to be sitting. The patient was talking in sentences. Okay, maybe the patient was a little bit agitated. Respiratory rate was definitely increased. What else did the history tell us? There were retractions present. There was breathing audible with the stethoscope. The pulse rate was 120 minutes ago. Okay. So, we, they did not do a, an ABG, but they did a peak flow. The peak flow reading was 64.6. Over saturation was 90% at room air. Okay. So, based on the categories, some of the Parameters was under the mild, the rest was in the moderate. So, kung sa man siyang category, get the higher one. So, get the patient is in bronchial, as the diagnosis, bronchial asthma, 
in modeling and calculation. Okay, how will you manage this patient? Think of the patient as your apple, your your amount, your patient in the clinic, or your patient that you have seen at the emergency room yourself. Okay? Do I give just a nebulized beta agonist? Do I give nebulized beta agonist plus oral steroids? Or I give a combination beta agonist plus perfume? Or I give the combination plus I start on steroids. Diyan na 